Yes, my friends. And I'm going to say it again. Fiends and sex machines, you know it. That's my tagline. Well, here we have it. It's yet another week of the Power Hour with me, Prince, and the fearless poopster. Here we are. What's up, guys? This is, you know, we're counting them. This is episode four of the Power Hour. Uh, And again, this week, we're kind of haphazard. I started a new job. So, uh, I had limited time to prepare, but I did. And we have a new segment that I'll unleash eventually. Uh, and I, I think we've got enough to talk about. Uh, so, how was your week so far, Poopster? Uh, busy, I guess. Um, <clears throat> busy like a bee? Busy. busy. So busy, I haven't talked to you since last week, the power hour. I haven't really talked to you much online as well. You're busy with that with that uh, people hacking, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Gotta find people, you know? Yeah, you got to hack the people, man. That's what it's all about. Hack the people. Oh, yeah. Actually, my, my week was <laughs> pretty bad because... Well, not bad. I missed, like... Uh, Payment on two credit cards. Oh, yeah. Like Delinquent. Like, You're the worst that? of the worst. Yeah. We work best. But, taking care of a little social hacking, like you were saying, just got them to social hack the credit card me. company. Did you like, I'm sorry, my cat. She's a terrible exactly. magic. I won't do it again. I won't do it again. I That's promise. Me. I promise. And they're like, okay, okay, Poopster, we believe you. Because the credit card companies exactly. are so fair and just. <laughs> right. It's like, got to stick it to them. Yeah. Social hack the credit card companies. It's okay. I social hack cu- customer service a lot. I mean, it's fun. Uh, I it social is. hack people on the phone. You know, you just... Drive the narrative. Whatever it is. Exactly. <laughs> it is fun. I mean, it's like you can just kind of talk to them, manipulate them to what you want. So that's the key. We're the worst. The key <laughs> worst is not to get people. them pissed off. So. We're like, <laughs> manipulate people. It's cool. <laughs> it's cool. Hey, you're not, you know, hurting anybody. You know, it's, uh, <sighs> but the key is, you know, be nice to them. I'm shaking my head at myself, Poopster. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're deplorable human beings. <laughs> but we're not hurting anybody. See, that's that's the key difference. No, it's we're just, just having some fun, making yeah. people doing what we want, and um, <laughs> fun never hurt know. anybody. Exactly, oh. not hurting anybody. You know, oh. it's uh, like I said, the tactic is actually be nice to them. So when you're nice to them. Yeah, like the, a, a the thing is... Uh, of fresh air. Yeah, um, Grimnir is saying, actually, credit card companies love when you miss a payment, Poopster, because they jack up those interest rates. And if you think about, about it on an uh, aggregated scale, if everybody does that, then yeah, that's what happens. But well, yeah, think, that's think exactly about, what it is. Like, yeah. the, um, because, uh, you know, they actually have to look back at your history. I mean, if you're pretty good, then uh, they're going to let it off because they want you to continue using the card. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's so true. It's in the, yeah, that's a lot of their, their, their profit is from late payments, and a lot of people are doing that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, oh. I, I think that's probably, you know, a majority of the business model is, is that they expect people to drive up their bottom line because the economy isn't exactly uh, adequate and credit is kind of a clusterfuck in the first place so yep. you know yeah I'm sure they have some kind of statistic on you know how much people actually miss and pay the minimum balance and then you know oh, earn yeah, that yeah. interest so they have it all down I mean, of course they do yeah 
I, I'd be, um, I wouldn't be disappointed, but I'd be surprised if they if they didn't. Right. Yeah. They are. So. That's a big feel. Yeah. So moving uh, on, I guess, to a different part of finance. What's been going on in cryptocurrency this week? I mean, we know it's not much. It's sideways fucking 10K to six, uh, 10, 7. You know, that's basically how it goes. I guess people are scalping the markets every week. Yeah, yeah. But it doesn't go below 10K now, like Bitcoin. It's uh, it's pretty stable. Which is I mean, interesting. Yeah, it's it's been holding 10K, which is, is something to be said. I mean, we're... Earlier this year, we were kind of questioning it because it was dipping pretty pretty far in the nines, you know. Yeah. But it's. I, I think the the ten ten k barriers is uh. It's a good place to be, honestly. It's. <laughs> it could be a lot worse. Yeah. You know? I don't know if it's going to go up or down uh, based on like the so called recession is happening. Um. So, but it's holding. So I mean, that's a very good sign. Well, I'm almost convinced now that the subsidy halving uh, has almost a lot to do with Bitcoin's price. Because if you think about it, it's driven by, you know, the mining farms and such. So if they're not, if they're going to be making half the money, it's going to be, you know, Bitcoin's going to be obviously more scarce. So, yeah. I mean, I, I was reading a, a an article about uh, the halvings so far and how much the price has uh, exploded each Bitcoin having and uh, you know it, according to the lore uh, their history I mean it's uh, it should go up quite a bit the next subsidy, ha subsidy having I don't have the information in front of me but um, I forget the percentages but it's been quite a hefty percentage and it's been pretty guaranteed each having and the only reason, you know, we see Litecoin suffering, it's 69.48 right now. Um, like, the reason that Litecoin exploded last time along with Bitcoin was because of the Bitcoin halving right before the Litecoin halving. Right. I mean, each, each halving is not equal, as they, as they say. I mean, it's, I guess it's only true for Big Daddy Bitcoin, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it didn't happen for our Litecoin, that's for sure. It's no. kind of... Did the opposite effect. Yeah. Not only did not help the price, but actually tanked the price. That was unexpected, actually, you know? Yeah, I was very surprised. But then, then again, you know, the only thing that's actually up and holding is Bitcoin, the big daddy. Yeah. Like, you said, all the yeah. alts are, like, oh, either... hurting, man. It, yeah, it's just stagnate or just going down, like... It lends credence to everybody's, uh, you know, supposition that... Uh, all the alts will die, or you know, the majority of alts will die, and I believe that. I, I I agree with that because most of them are just clones of shit, um, and there are some that are you know truly unique and useful that will stand, I think, the test of time. But uh, people like things like Ripple, um, Tether, uh, I mean. Whatever this Unised Leo, I, actually I don't know about that because uh, I don't know what it is. So <laughs> maybe it does. But uh, man, I'm looking at these other ones. Um, what do we got in the the coin market cap? Do Dogecoin will will always be alive though. Oh after, yeah. After the um, the meme wars of 2025, Dogecoin will be the only crypto left standing because of its un uh, unlimited supply. It's the only thing that will survive the the meme wars. It's written in prophecy. I'm telling you, bro. <laughs> yeah. The fuck is Crypto.com coin? Man, they're everywhere. They're, they're just, it's too much. That's the problem, I think. You um, know, what bugs me are these um, the stable coins, the, the U.S. dollar-backed stable coins. Like, uh, what's the one that's basically an ETH, con an ETH contract... Uh, stabilized by another ETH contract? What the fuck is it? Um, no idea. Oh, you know what it is. You'd know if I said it. Uh, but, um, I would have to go to Binance because I know I know what it looks like on Binance. Binance has oh. everything. Yeah, Binance is a weird exchange, man. 
What do we got? For, let me see. I want to find it. I'm USD. Okay. Uh, Pax. I think that's what it is. Pax is the one. Pax. Yeah, Pax is the one. That I think that's the ETH contract stabilized by another ETH contract. Man, that sounds like really rocky waters. But I I did hear the other argument basically that would you rather have entities like physical entities regulating the price or would you rather leave it up to an algorithm and a contract? Now, to be to be fair, I probably would rather you know left up to an automated system that did it without any you know any ulterior motives or anything like that. But I just yeah. shit talk ETH. You know me. We all yeah. do. <sighs> yeah. So, what else we got, huh? Crypto, you know, crypto's what it is. I don't want to talk too much about it because people get bored and, uh, you know, not many are are initiated at this point. Even though right. if, if they want to learn, they can listen to our previous uh, episode one and two where we talk all about it um, well, for half the show. Yeah, we, we, we'll definitely have a segment in every show, but... Oh, yeah. 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 The state of crypto. The state of crypto. So um, there's a lot of science topics uh, circulating the news this week. Um, which I find very interesting. Uh, one thing that I find particularly interesting is that every week it seems a new asteroid uh, is potentially skimming the Earth. Like, you know, it's not that these things come out of nowhere, so... I don't know what the International Business Times agenda is, but... So, I mean, apparently this one, uh, uh, CNOS, the Center for Near Object Earth Studies, approaching asteroid is bigger than the towers on the Golden Gate Bridge. Um, CNOS 504-800. So, yeah, 32,122 miles per hour. That's a, that's a solid speed, you know. It's a planet killer. <laughs> well... I'm pretty sure there's always asteroids going past the Earth. It's well, just yeah, that we've never had the technology to actually track it and see do. it, probably. We do have the technology, as far as I know. I mean, we have satellites, you know. I'm talking about, like, like uh, you know, 50, 60 years ago. Like, you oh, know. well, I'm talking about now. Or even 100 years ago, you know, I'm, I'm saying, like, Probably like a lot of asteroids gone by, you know, and we don't oh, yeah. even know about. It. Well, there's the Chicxulub impact. Um, you know about that one, right? The what? Chicxulub. Uh, where was it? Uh, Chicxulub. It's in Russia, right? No, 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 no. I think it's in Mexico. I just want to make sure because uh, last week, actually, I've got to um, retract some of my statements because I talked about the Atacama alien and. Um, it was because of that uh, William Shatner show. He was talking about somewhere in Mexico with those, uh, uh, you know, sectors of dead space with, where aircrafts fall to the sky. And apparently there's something that, that was almost exactly like, like the Atacama alien in Mexico, but mm. the Atacama alien was actually in uh, Chile. So I want to correct myself there. Okay? Yeah. Oh, okay. Anyways, Chicxulub... Um, it's basically the uh, the asteroid that killed the dinosaurs. Um, so it fell. Oh, that one. Yeah, uh, it fell on the Yucatan the, Peninsula. Yeah, that's it. Yep. Yep. Yeah, that one's a while ago. That yeah. was a while ago. But back then, I mean, and even in our early, um, the Earth's early early days, uh, the the solar system was extremely chaotic. I mean, we were getting hit by impacts pretty regularly, and that probably marked. I mean, we get hit with uh, with asteroids and meteors every day. I mean, they're not sizable. Most of them burn up in the atmosphere, so... But... Yeah. Yes, chicks and lube. Woo! Giggity, giggity, giggity. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, so Chicxulub killed the dinosaurs and basically driv- drove us to where we are today in terms of uh, evolutionarily. I mean, I would I would be happy with with T Rex as president, not the musician. <laughs> I don't know the musician maybe, but I think I would too. Yeah, T Rex, but like smash. I know my uh, and bite. youngest one would love it. <laughs> well, Raptor Jesus, he would like a Raptor president. Raptor Jesus. That might work. Yeah, Raptor Jesus is another Dogecoin. Um, or the uh, Macho Comancho. Uh, you, you ever seen the movie uh, Idiocracy? I have. Now, that's a good president. President Camacho. <laughs> Macho, yeah, exactly. Or the Beef Supreme, the other one. Man, yeah. He's... Yeah, Idiocracy is an interesting one, man. It's it's a funny film. I think it's it's kind of um, prophesized modern society. <laughs> it's definitely a window into where we are. Oh shit! Yeah. I forgot about uh, one more thing about crypto. Um, you guys know what we you know what we love about Roger Veer, um, the infamous Bitcoin thief. So, uh, Monday, September 2nd, what time, isn't it after September? Yeah, so, I guess it already launched. September 2nd, Roger Veer will launch a new exchange on Bitcoin.com. Will it be more successful than Mt. Gox? Well, why would Bitcoin even say that? Well, I guess that's, that's not the Bitcoin Cash Bitcoin. That's a Twitter post from actual Bitcoin, I would assume. So, yeah, uh, that was just a small thing to add to the crypto verse. Um, so, Roger Veer is launching an exchange on Bitcoin.com because uh, Satoshi and the other guy, I forget his name, failed to register all of the dot whatevers uh, when it came to Bitcoin. They registered Bitcoin.org, and that was it. So, yeah. Their, uh, Sock Puppet is hoping that you don't use too many $5 words, poopster, this time. So, get your dictionary out. Get the expensive fucking ones. Roll I'll use it, man. Internet. Yeah, uh, go to thesaurus.com and just start, <laughs> start rambling off $30 words, $35, $50 words. You know, go for it. It's all I'm going to talk great. about Trump, man. Huge, tremendous, Huge, tremendous, tremendous. Yeah. So I remember that uh, every time uh, during his campaign, I noticed that he always used tremendous. <laughs> I was making a joke to my friends, like, man, every time he's gonna say that word, we're gonna take a shot. Yeah. I'm gonna drink, but you know that's a good drinking game. Yo, man, we used to have this drinking game called the Power Hour, and what it, what the Power actually shit, I didn't realize the significance of this we had a drink called the power uh, a drinking game called the power hour and basically what it was is you take a shot of beer every minute for an hour and man you get wasted so that's the official power hour drinking game the power hour wow get hammered you get hammered you don't think it's going to be a lot but man a shot of beer a minute for every hour it's it's a lot of beer that's a lot of beer that's what i'm saying that's a, a lot of beer we used to drink it while listening to the band Shat, because every song is like 60 seconds long, almost. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. I was always wondering that, where that uh, name, of, name of the show comes from. I mean... I, know, actually, I, I didn't, that didn't even good, come into my mind when naming the Power Hour, honestly. Yeah. Uh, I just thought about that now, and it was kind of funny. So, Well, audience, now you know where the Power Hour originated from. I don't know if it originated there, really, this one. I mean, but it did, now that I think of it, I guess. Maybe it was some sort of um, subconscious thing. Now I need to do a power hour myself. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, so, like I said, a lot of interesting stuff going on in science this week, in, in, in uh, astronomy. Um Oh, I'm just reading some of it here. Look, what do we got? Getting grunk? Yeah, man. That's what's up. What do I got, man? I gotta change this. I have to 
So I don't have any scripts on my web browser. I didn't visit this before. So let's see. What do we got here? Um, yeah. So it says, the Big Bang was not actually the beginning of the universe. I know that that's always been uh, a contested, a hotly contested issue in the scientific community because... Uh, I, According to the Big Bang, there was an infinitely dense point that we uh, essentially exploded from. So, uh, what comes before that? It's kind of like the chicken and the egg thing, right? So, yeah. Let's see what we got here. Ah, and this is funny. Big Bang got a problem. Yo, I'll solve it. Check out the hook. I, 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 <laughs> boy, they're not too Are clever with those, man. So, yeah, no, no disrespect to the Big Bang Theory. It's, uh, it's backed by boatloads of scientific evidence, and it's, uh, it almost definitely happened. This idea usually credited to, you know, Hubble, Edwin Hubble, uh, and George Lemaitre, uh, 1920s. And it's definitely expanding, so something that's expanding, uh, and it's actually expanding faster than they would have expected, which is very interesting. That's more recent news that they uh, have... have uh, discovered so I mean in terms of expanded universe it's got to branch out from somewhere so it's only logical that the Big Bang were to be uh, a hypothesis or a viable theory Makes so sense. I'm trying to see what what they see here about or what they say about the universe not originating nidla Universe not originating at the beginning. <laughs> I can't talk. At the Big Bang. <laughs> so, there are a few frustrating pieces that don't seem to fit the puzzle. Uh, for one thing, evidence from the co cosmic microwave background, white noise, you know, there's, there's uh, white noise from the Big Bang, suggests that the universe is flat, even though the Big Bang predi predicts that the universe is most likely curved. And there's also the fact that everything in the universe seems to be about the same temperature, even though some parts of the universe are so far apart and the age of the universe is so young, there's hardly any chance these parts were ever in contact with each other to even out the heat. So, and finally, finally they say, the violence of the singular singularity-style Big Bang should have produced ultra-high-velocity particles called magnetic monopoles. But so far... The monopoles are not to be find, found. Yeah. That's interesting. So what actually happened, they say, you know? Um, inflation theory. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. This is interesting. I actually didn't read this before, so you guys are learning about this uh, just as I am. Um... Mm -hmm. Yeah, inflation predicts a flat... It would be weird if our universe was flat and not curved. But if you think about it, uh, as, as far as dimensions go, maybe maybe we are living in a two-dimensional universe, and somehow we're... I mean, maybe... What do we know of dimensions anyways, uh, as humans? So that's a really strange question. Maybe we can exist in... Well, string theory, theory says oh, there's uh, 10 or 11 dimensions, so... Uh, fuck it. Maybe they all exist at once. I don't know. Isn't that uh, that show, the OA? It's all uh, about traveling to uh, different dimensions. I've never watched the OA. Yeah, Aloha is the one who uh, was shilling it. I think it ran for two seasons. Uh, I watched it. It was... I waste my time on it actually, but uh, it wasn't. I thought it was kind of dumb, but a lot of people liked it apparently. But it's supposed to be like, oh, he, he, yeah, yeah. Near so, yeah. death experience will bring on traveling to a, another dimension. That mirrors the one that they're you know they're currently in. So, <laughs> but they canceled their. Uh, after two seasons, so must not work out. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. 
Anyways, ra- wrapping up the Big Bang thing, uh, actually, I got to the end of the article, and uh, they have this summation at the end. So, if your knowledge of the Big Bang starts with a sing- singularity, it may be time to re- revise that old fable. Here, we'll start. A long, long time ago, before matter or radiation existed, energy bound in the fabric of space made everything expand by a trillion times in less than a blink of an eye. Soon, that energy turned into matter and radiation, which eventually coalesced into stars and galaxies. And the rest is history. So, they're not saying that it was an infinitely dense point that the fabric of you know the fabric of space existed before mat- matter and radiation infected so eh, it's an interesting theory it's it i i enjoy that i enjoy it what, how do you how do you think about that well what's your what are your thoughts boopster give me some 5 dollar words massive <laughs> Massive. Massive. I, I think, you know, having a Big Bang Theory is massive. It's a massive theory. It's huge, man. It's huge. It's huge. <laughs> huge. Well, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of interesting stuff. I mean, I, I, I bookmarked all these articles because I didn't have a whole lot of time to prepare tonight, so I just fucking bookmarked a slew of scientific articles because there's a lot of interesting stuff. Uh, actually, this, this one, is something I, I thought about before because uh, Friday tomorrow is Friday the thirteenth, and it's also a uh, full moon. So Harvest get moon. ready because it's going to be crazy on everywhere. You know, people just tend to act up for whatever reason on these wolf moons. <laughs> it's also if they call it the Harvest Moon. It's like uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, inside with something moon. else. Uh, some kind of it makes the moon yellow or something tomorrow. Um, so. Let me see. I have here. Well, it's it's larger than it appears to be. Yeah. That that's one big thing. Um, I don't know about the color, but it's uh, oh yeah, bigger, brighter, and more orange. Orange. It's, that's it. Yeah. It's due to the location of the moon near the horizon. Um, right. The orange color is a physical effect and happens because you're looking through a greater thickness of the Earth's atmosphere than when you gaze up overhead. Really, this article says, how to see the harvest moon. What the fuck? Look up in the sky. <laughs> I'm going to have to take some pictures tomorrow. Yeah. Me too. Nighttime pictures. Yeah, i got to charge up my cannon. It's not really yeah. that good. At, I, don't have, I don't have any good lenses, so... But I have, like, one lens. <laughs> Same here. I mean, I have the starter lens. That's it. <sighs> it's better than you nothing. You guys use the cell phone camera. It's pretty good, actually. My you cell phone use... camera isn't that great. I mean, it takes good pictures sometimes, and I have to run them through, like, uh, Nick Nick Collection. I don't know if yeah. you can use Nick Collection, but it, it's a good photo processor. Um, mm. Yeah, so the full moon, Friday the 13th, craziness all over, probably. Get ready. <laughs> It is Friday the 13th, isn't it? I, uh-huh. I, did, I just realized that, too, when you said it. Yeah, dude. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be fucked up, bro. Bro. Yeah, don't go out anywhere, man. Just stay home. Just stay home, bro. I'm planning to do. Stay home. Right. So, I just want to uh, lead into this next segment. We're, we're trying to break up the format here uh, and add some fruity, fun, pebbly... I don't know why Fruity Pebbles came into it. But I had some interesting stuff to break up the monotony of us, the two assholes, just talking with no interlude. So, we have our new segment. Asshole of the Week. This is not one of us. This is not one of us. So who's the asshole this week? So, this week's asshole of the week has been nominated 
by the illustrious Zepix. And he nominated UK Drillas on Twitter. He is an asshole because he DDoSed Wikimedia, Twitch, and WoW, World of Warcraft Classic. So, let's talk about why uh, this man deserves the title Asshole of the Week. UK Drillas on Twitter. Who DDoSes Wikimedia? I mean, and are, if you're, are you going to DDoS Twitch in World of Warcraft because you lost or, or you, your character got killed? Or, I mean, I, I know there's a lot of um, infighting that goes on in, in games, but, uh, you know? But Wikimedia. Why Wikimedia? Booster? I don't like the founder, maybe. That's the only thing I can think of. You, they, you, what's his name? What's the founder's name? I can't remember. Uh, Jimmy Wales. Jimmy Wales. Why Why do you think people don't like Wikipedia? Well, I think like every year or I don't know how many times a year, he would put a banner out on the Wikipedia and ask him for, asking people for money. I think that rubs off on people. Well, Christ, I mean, they run the site for free. It's it's volunteers. I agree, but, you know, you know how people are, you know. You, people are like, oh, I ain't do giving a hand out. You know, you know, that's, that's, my, that's my stance on thinking that's what he did, maybe. I don't know. You know, one argument that, that may be valid or semi-valid or, or at least real for some people is, is that uh, Wikipedia is a source of, of misinformation. I, I doubt that's why this guy did it, because obviously, you know, he could have targeted something else besides Twitch and World of Warcraft in, in conjunction with Wikimedia, but so I, I imagine his uh, his reasons were superfluous at best, as they say. But uh, with Wikim- Wikipedia, you know, it's obviously user-contributed, used to write the articles, but on that level as well if if you read through an article that's not cited and you can't and you can't read where these claims come from then don't believe it if you do you're a fucking idiot maybe maybe he like maybe he read some unsighted article on wikipedia and like did something like uh got his girlfriend pregnant because he thought that on the harvest moon, girls can't get pregnant, according to Wikipedia. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I bet that's probably the most likely day for women to get pregnant. Government propaganda? Yeah. Uh, I would agree. Uh, someone's, uh, Grimnir is saying it also that Wikipedia is, is a lot of government propaganda. I, I think there is propaganda from all arms on there it's it's universal propaganda uh but again i mean citations and as long as you don't take it as the only source of information i think i think you're good because there is some useful information on there uh, i i mean there has been as far as i saw but just like anything on the internet you know you got to you know, half wave <laughs> and do your own research first. Exactly. I mean, I won't read an article usually. I go straight to the citations and I just read the citations from whatever it is. That's that's how I roll. Good idea, yeah. But anyways, why why Twitch and WoW Classic? It's a weird it's just a weird combination. Twitch is, is the, the video gamer, site man. for uh, for gamers, right? Huh? Twitch is the video yeah. site for gamers, right? Yeah, you stream yourself playing video games. I've never used it. I apologize for, for being behind the times. I'm on there. You're on Twitch? Yeah. I show myself uh, typing on the keyboard. Oh, that's right. The strange man's torso. <laughs> or chin. <laughs> 
That's right. The rest of the teenagers always get a kick out of that. There you go. <laughs> Speaking of teenage girls, uh, Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> I don't you know. Didn't them, right? I wasn't really going to no, lie into that, but it just seems too opportune. Um, uh, I don't know. I just I just think this whole thing is funny because because of the whole Kentucky Fried Children thing, and that's my conspiracy. <clears throat> so, so is he alive or what? Jeffrey Epstein? Yeah. I What's your take? I think he's dead. Dead as a doornail. He's dead, but did he kill himself? Yeah, I think he did. You would think he did. Uh, so there's no conspiracy, right? Oh, no, that doesn't mean there's no conspiracy. Not at all. I, I think mean, it's just so, like... He killed himself so odd, to the conspiracy. You know? that, that, yeah, that would so be the they better take argument. him off of Suicide Watch, and then... So happens the security camera malfunctioned during that time, and the guards, what, fell asleep or something? I mean, uh, I don't know. It's classic, <laughs> classic uh, slapstick comedy. <laughs> yeah, it's like a movie. It's like a movie. Tell you. Yeah, so conspiracy theories. This is what I... Jeffrey Epstein's Island Temple inspired dozens of conspiracy theories. We spoke to someone who went inside, so... There's a southwestern quarter of the, the island features an unusual blue and white striped building that resembles a temple or place of worship. Um, let's see what it says here. An entrance to an underground lair, an altar to an ancient deity, a monument to sexual predation, a defiant gesture raised like a middle finger toward the rest of the world. Those are all conspiracies of what it could be. Um, I see all these theories. A, a, a facility for child abuse or sacrifice? Man, fucking weird. This is news. Theory two, it's a gym. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It's a gym. Well, it's a, he, he looks like he's not fat, so he works out. What do we got here? Uh, Epstein did not die in his prison cell. So let's see. Let's read this. Thank you, Grimnir. Um Let's see. You know, I can get I can get behind this theory, but I just want to know what the sources of, of this information are. So, Jeff, Jeffrey Epstein was removed from his prison cell to another part of the Metropolitan Correctional, Correctional Center hours before his death, causing serious doubt about the narrative surrounding the pedophile's reported suicide. Well, well that was true, right? So, shocking revelations, if true, shatter the Justice Department's narrative that Epstein hung himself in his cell with a prison bedsheet. Yeah, you know, I guess it's common sense. Yeah, I don't know. It, it's really strange. May, may, it all comes comes back to David Icke. Maybe he's not even human. I'm telling you, dude. Kentucky Fried Children, they're, they're harvesting kids for, for their blood and organs and meat and stuff, and they're eating them. It's not, it's not sex. David Icke is right. And he couldn't hang, him house, hang himself with a bed sheet because he's, he's an immortal, shape-shifting reptile. He wouldn't die. So... <laughs> oh, man. My uh, roommate's child is yelling at the computer. You probably heard it. I heard it. Yeah, I heard it. Yeah. Not very loud. Door closed. Background. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. What can I do? I don't it's live in a studio, weekend. man. It seems like it's happening this, on weekends. This is real life, man. I don't have a studio. <laughs> so yeah, Epstein. That, that's an interesting, uh, interesting addition, Grimnir. Thank you. Um, 
So something to do with Egypt about the temple. You know, who knows? Let's see. It's the burial ground for his parents. It's a music room. So what's the temple for? Um, so apparently someone actually entered it, as this says, um, by mid-August after speaking with the wait, speaking to the piano tuner who never tuned Epstein's, Epstein's piano. I was blocked and bewildered. I felt no closer to understanding the history of the building or the lore around it. Uh, no, that doesn't really explain anything. Come on, these long-ass articles. You're not formatted for me telling this on a radio show. Um, <laughs> these developments... Okay. So this guy apparently did go in, yeah, so... Less noticed vid videos that featured close-ups of the blue and white building. As you see, um, I'm not going to link the clip, but the arch medieval door facing the island's interior was in fact painted to get the illusion of depth, and the temple's external archways were illusions. Uh, in a second video, Shackelford's drone captured a portion of the building's interior seen through one of the side windows. You'll notice what appears to be construction-grade scaffolding, two stacks of small mattresses, and an easel. These developments were mis mi mystifying. Why would Epstein, someone who uh, had access to unseemingly unlimited amounts of capital, choose a mural, an elaborate, elaborate door over the real thing? What were the significance of the mattresses? Oh, I don't even want to think about that, man. I just cringed. Christ. I just, like, had a sick feeling. <laughs> uh, anyways... Episode of the Piano Tuner. Most professional piano tuners are listed in a directory maintained by the Piano Technicians Guild, a group in Kansas City, Kansas. This is how I verified and contacted the first piano tuner, who said he never serviced Epstein's piano on Little St. James. So he looked at the piano tuners uh, on the Virgin Islands, and he found this guy, Patrick Barron. And the phone rang... It was Baron. Yes, he had tuned Epstein's piano. Is that is that code for something? Is this just like I don't know. This is weird, uh, man. Wow! Inside the temple, the piano tuners saw a Wurlitzer grand piano and a po a portrait of Epstein and the Pope. <laughs> what the fuck, man? He's a religious man, man. <laughs> I don't know, dude. Wait. He's not even Catholic, is he? <laughs> I don't know if that matters, dude. <laughs> no, it doesn't. So a gray couch and sofa, a desk 10 feet long, uh, floor-to-ceiling bookcases... They went high enough to require a ladder, but there was no ladder. Um, they were filled with hardcover bestsellers, nothing scholarly. scholarly. The, the grand piano, and that picture of Epstein and the Pope. Wow, this is so weird, man. <laughs> Fuck. Why do I, why do I get into this stuff? Maybe it's an entrance to an underground facility. Oh, who knows, man? I don't know. That's really a weird one. All right, moving on. Um, a few more things to get into before we burn out the candle, I guess. Uh, what else do we got here? Oh, yeah. Potheads beware. Scientists in breath invent. Psh, let me try that over again. Scientists invent weed breathalyzer. Fuck, man. Fucking science. <laughs> yeah, man. Science is a real deal. No, man. I'm 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 chiding science this time. 
<laughs> drive high, get a DUI. Man, I used to, I used to smoke weed and drive because it was safer than drinking and driving. And I I never fucked around when I was high and driving. I'm incriminating myself here, though. Never mind. I guess so. A little bit. Scientists from the Swanson School of Engineering at the University of Pittsburgh have, at least according to their public press release, created a boxy little device that is able to measure the level of THC in an individual's blood to a high degree of accuracy, pinpointing results at a level equal to, to equal to or above wow, the mass spectrom- spectrometry process, which is the, um, you know, how urine tests work, I guess, or blood gas, too. Which, that's pretty impressive. I must say. I I would imagine that if they can do that with marijuana, they could do it with a whole lot of other things, too. Huh. Oh, here's yeah. a, a link under it. Mike Tyson's weed habit costs $40,000 a month. <laughs> yeah, I read about that. Like, dude, for him. you still have one left? Good for him, man. I don't know. Whatever. I think he's broke, though, man. I don't know. I don't know, man. The only money he's getting is from the Hangover movies. Really? Oh, there's one other movie he did, but I don't think he paid that much. Get paid. Probably not. Man. Oh, here's something interesting that I wanted to, wanted to talk about. That uh, I don't know if you you're aware, but China has been um, undergoing. Attempts. Well, they've they've been attempting to to uh, modify the weather for quite a long time. It's it's actually been quite not publicized, but it's it's quite well known that that uh, and actually weather modification isn't uh, isn't strange. I mean, they do cloud seeding and stuff like that. But this is an interesting article that I found uh, that radar shows China using weather control to manipulate and change the direction of typhoons which is interesting because obviously the Bahamas just was you know destroyed by uh, Dorian yeah so well, the US they've been uh, what's it called Harp oh I think Harp, yeah, Harp, Harp, Harp been, uh, Harp's Harp yeah they've been modifying they weather for a long time well which makes you wonder I mean you know maybe they're they're doing this on purpose that that uh, I don't know they are weaponizing it, so maybe maybe that was like a rogue uh, tornado, or maybe they just wanted to destroy Florida because Florida is fucked most <laughs> of it. I don't know. Possible. Anyways, so about China's uh, typhoon deflecting, um, there's a lot of weird stuff that's that that's happened as far as typhoons, uh, ty- typhoon paths predicted typhoon pass. Basically, you know, typhoons headed towards the mainland China um, have just mysteriously turned around, basically, it's uh, from their, their projected paths. You know, we know, uh, obviously, Gulf streams can change and all that stuff, but it does seem odd that uh, they seem to be bouncing. It's, it's an interesting one. I think uh, controlling the weather is definitely definitely happening in some regard. Yeah, you know, I that think goes into the whole climate up. change thing. I mean, you know, I, I'm not sure if I, I think the climate is changing, but it I think it naturally changes. We go through cycles, uh, probably longer than uh, we've been here to even realize. Uh, whether we or not are affecting it is debatable, but you know the majority of scientists agree unanimously that that we are in fact in fact affecting it. Uh, I mean, go you can claim that every every scientist is in on the scam, I guess, but uh, I don't know. I it's hard to dispute when when everyone. Uh, basically agrees it's kind of like uh but you know i'm open to argument like i said but uh what, what was i getting into by saying that 
I don't know. Um, oh, with the the weather, the the you know the climate change conspiracy. If it is a conspiracy, this could be a part of that conspiracy. You know, I I, I don't know. It's um, interesting thought, but who knows? I think it's uh, a is a real thing. Yeah, I believe the. I'm side with the scientists on this one. I tend to as well. I mean, you know, I'm a skeptic. I'm a born skeptic, but you know, facts is facts, bro. Yeah, do, man. Why do I say bra so much, man? I never, I never even talk like that. It's just with you, poopster. <laughs> bro. I'm like, bro, bro. Was it was it on IRC the other day, or was it somebody was saying? No, was, uh, I think it was some other medium. Bro, bro. Oh, some guy in my Facebook, I think. It's like he was saying he was uh, at a, a water cooler at work or something, and everybody's saying, bro, bro. Bro, bro, bro. <laughs> like, dude, stop saying bro. And I give him a hard time. Yeah. Give them all a hard time. Fuck them. With yeah. a rock, if you have to. Bro. 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 All right, we only have a few more things here before we wrap up. This uh, this hour actually went faster than than uh, I predicted, um, and we didn't have any technical difficulties, which which is cool. <laughs> yeah, no so, technical difficulties. I, I was actually not talking to myself in the very beginning. <laughs> yeah, so I'm gonna wrap up on on a heavy subject followed by a very light subject. Um, is reality? even real now you're talking the matrix shit right no well I guess <laughs> potentially but reality is what it's basically cognitive right it's what you see your world as well <laughs> you know I see it as this there's the world is a very strange place. I mean, you know, uh, on our level, it's it's very different than than how things act on the quantum level. I think we might have touched, well, we did touch on this, um, you know, the double slit experiment and and right. the superposition and stuff like that. Um, I think we even talked about uh, is reality real? I don't remember. It's all melding in. But um, where was I going with this? Basically. Uh, uh, what do I want to say? Reality. Well, no, I mean, reality, yeah, absolutely. I, but <sighs> is it just a projection? Projection? I don't know. Where are we? <laughs> I think it's just our minds, man. Where is my mind? mind. Where is my mind? You know that song? I lost my mind. Yeah. Well, the sixties, dude. Uh, think of a lot of animals in this in the world, where they have smaller brains and doesn't have as high of a cognitive ability as humans. Well, what do they think like, of reality? Uh, they just kind even, of go about, even though getting other food animals and don't die, have right? the same cos- uh, co- cognitive ability as us. They still do seem to have the basic things that, you know, constitute a social structure, uh, and, uh, yeah, like, if, if you, if you take a, what is it, a flock of chickens, is that what you call them? You know, it's hard to deny that they, that they resemble us in, in some innate way, you know, it's, uh, interesting. Yeah. So, the light Ooh. thing I want to end on. The reason cats meow is so surprising and cool. <laughs> Z-Cat would like this one. So, uh, <laughs> many cat owners find it adorable when their feline friends meow to communicate, but it's not always clear what the kitties are actually trying to say. Are they hungry? Bored? Just want to say hello? As it turns out, they're meowing for a very specific reason, and they just want you to pay attention. Cat expert uh, Ibrahim Radhan Radhan explains that cat actually well, that's an interesting thing because uh, Muslims love cats. 
but anyways, I don't know if he's he's Muslim, but I'm just assuming. Um, nothing wrong with that. Cats are awesome, uh, but cats don't meow just for the sake of meowing, even uh, to or even to be utterly adorable. Obviously, uh, these meows are strictly meant for humans. Actually, I've I've mentioned this before, not here, but uh, cats don't meow to other cats. Um, they only meow to humans. Um, so, yeah, the, other, the cats communicate with each other by scent, uh, scent and touch. So, the meow is definitely human directed. So it says, uh, the, if the meow is short and quick, the cat is saying hello. Aww. Wow, that was a high falsetto. I do sing falsetto, but not on air usually. Uh, multiple meows. Multiple meows. This is an excited greeting from your kitty. This might happen if you've been away from them for several hours. Uh, this is all making sense. Mid pitch meow. Your furry friend wants attention or feud. Fuck. I'm decoding my cat's meows. Do you have cats, Poofster? I do not currently. I had one when I was a kid. Do you have the any pets? One. What's that? Do you have any pets? Not at right now. Uh, oh, he, I used to have goldfish. Oh yeah. Then you <laughs> before ate kids. But uh. Oh yeah, you I do have my, kids. Uh, so you do have my pets. kids are allergic to cats and dogs. Some dogs. You need one of those oh. hairless cats, a Manx. Ah. Uh, they're kind of yeah, not very. Not very good looking. Those hairless cats. I used to uh, go to this dispensary in North Hollywood and. Um, the girl there had had Manx cats, and I used to go over there to fix the computers and stuff. And uh, these hairless cats, like rubbing up against you, like it's unsettling at first. <laughs> yeah, I imagine. Yeah, they're they're cool though. Yeah. So yeah, cats. I guess they're. Um, I wonder if that was just Ibrahim who came up with that, or if it was like a team of of like. Pay researchers. <laughs> this is a guess. Oh, this is a guest post by Ibrahim Raidhan, creative cats lover here dot com. So the mystery <laughs> deepens. Who is this man? <laughs> you have to find out. Tell us in the next episode. Yeah, if you want to find out, tune into the next episode of the Power Hour with Poopster and Prince. Should I end on that? I don't know. <laughs> Is it too much of a cliffhanger to find out who's who's the author of the of the cat lover <laughs> post? Because it's not actually loading for me. The cat lover here. <laughs> the suspense bills for next week. Yes, actually, no. They linked it wrong. They they put catloverhere.com, and the tag is actually catsloverhere.com. So which is it? Oh, no, nope. it's Cat Lover here. It's spelled wrong, and both sites don't exist. So, I don't know if I trust the cat meowing article now, <laughs> or psychology today. It's definitely fishy, right? It's a conspiracy. Fuck. What's about? I've opened um, a wine bottle. From like nineteen no eighteen seventy five. Is that no or a whiskey bottle? Some vintage shit. Right. Anyways, uh I guess that's all I'm gonna leave you guys with today. We're gonna leave you with today. And next week I'm gonna come back better prepared because I, I should be better inclined with this job and have some more time to prepare. So tune in next week, folks. For the next episode of the Power Hour, Poopster and Prince. And hopefully we'll have a special guest again, or sometime. We're going to start doing guests. We just haven't had a chance. So, Anyways, thanks for tuning in, my friends. Thanks to Real Liberty Me- Li- <sighs> Thanks to RealLibertyMedia.com for hosting us. And thanks to everyone for listening. Over and out. Poopster. Peace. Peace.